What's up everyone, Ian Stewart here. And in this video, I just wanna quickly show you how I use the batch processors included in WaveLab Pro 10 to automate the production masters uh, creation for my mastering clients. So the way I like to work is when I'm finished with the mastering session, I've got sign off on everything, everything's all approved. I'm gonna render out uh, these archival production masters. And what that means for me is that it's 32 bit floating point at whatever the highest sample rate um, is of, of the source files that I received. So if I just received 44.1 source files, that's the way they're gonna stay. If I got something higher than that, um, they'll be higher here. But I know this is the highest resolution capture that I have, and that's a degree of future proofing for me so that if a client comes back in a couple of years and wants some new format that's come out, I have, the best resolution starting point uh, to go from. However, these aren't something that I'm going to go and send to the client because frankly, they're big files. They're not necessarily that useful right now. So what I want to do is use a couple batch processors to kind of automatically create the different formats that I want to give them, which are 24 bit at that same sample rate as the, the source file, 44 bit or uh, 44 K 16 bit wave files. 320K MP3s and 256K AACs. Um, and then I want them to all be in kind of appropriately named folders. Uh, so they're kind of easy for the client to navigate and see what's what. So you can use, uh, you can build a couple batch processors. Um, if, if you haven't set one up yet, it's really pretty easy. You just go to new batch processor. I'm just going to say create empty. And it, it creates an empty one here and you can add plugins to the plugin chain and, and then adjust these options down here um, to your liking. Now, the processing on both of these is really, there's not a lot going on. 24-bit versions, I'm just dithering down to 24-bit. And the 44.1K 16-bit versions, I'm resampling first to 44.1 and then uh, dithering down the 16 bit. Now where this kind of gets interesting is in the output format and execution tabs down here. So let's take a look real quick at what we've got going on. Starting with the high res versions, we're going to set it to subfolder of source path. So that's going to look at the source path of whatever the incoming audio file is and create a subfolder at that same directory path. And for me, it's going to be called 24 bit high res ADM for Apple digital masters. And then we're going to use a naming scheme, um, which is a preset I have saved, but it's saved in this batch processor as well. And it's going to take the uh, CD text from the metadata of the track performer. So that's basically the artist name. Then it's going to keep the, the same file name, which is based on those archival files that I've rendered out. And then it's going to put 24xx underscore production master at the end. Now I can just go in in finder and rename XX to uh, whatever the sample rate is really quickly. So that's what's happening there. If we look at the uh, production, the archival production master files, we see it's, it's the artist name um, 01, uh, which is the uh, track index number and then the song title. So it's basically appending, it's going to replace that artist name um, and then it's going to um, keep the, the track index and the song title, and then add that format onto the other, onto the end. Um, in format, we're just using one of the built-in factory presets for a uh, 24-bit wave. Um, we're gonna ignore the metadata. The options and XML, I've pretty much just got turned off. I've got all of these turned off and nothing's going on. I'm not adding any XML. And in terms of execution, I've got it set to auto start when dropping files because I just want to grab these, drop them in here and let it go. Um, it's going to auto remove converted files. Now what that means is not that it's removing these source files, but that it's just removing them from this file list. So once a file is done being converted, it'll remove it from this list. You know, it's done when there's no more files here, you know, they're all done. Um, I've got stop on error set up because if an error happens, I want to know about it. Um, and if a file is going to be overwritten, I want that to be reported as an error. Neither of those things should ever happen. And if they do, they're definitely something that I want attention called to before I send it out to a client. 
in terms of core usage, I'm going to set it to all cores um, because if I'm converting files, I'm not doing anything else. I, I want my computer to kind of go as fast as it can. In the 44.1K version, um, output is very similar, subfolder of source path. We're going to leave the name unchanged here, and you'll see why in a second. And then the folder I'm creating is just kind of a temporary folder, and, and you'll also see the reason for that in a minute. Um, but it's called 1644 PMs. Where this gets interesting is if we look at, nope, sorry, in the format tab, if we look at the file format, now this is another preset I've created and saved. It's a multi-format preset. If we look at this, we can see that I've got, um, sorry, I just noticed there's some extra space there. I've got three formats. I've got 16-bit 44.1K waves. I've got a 320K MP3 with the front half uh, codec. And I've got a 256K AAC. Um, if you click on these, you can just go through and set them up to your liking. You can add a, a new format up here. You can remove one. Um, you can allow multi-core rendering. Again, I do want to do that. Where this gets really slick is you can set up subfolders for each of these formats. So I've got a 16-bit CD quality subfolder an MP3 subfolder and an AAC's Apple Plus subfolder. And then you can additionally add a suffix to the file name. So again, here I'm, I'm adding this underscore 1644, underscore production master, um, et cetera, et cetera, suffixes to these files. So it really automates all the folder creation and naming. And um, so let's just go through and show you real quickly. Um, so if I just come up and grab these files. I'm going to go ahead, drop them in here. You can see it cranks through them pretty quick. This is like, you know, a 30 minute uh, album thereabouts. So there's all the 24 bit ones. Now I can just grab them again, drop them in here. And if we just bring this folder to the front, we can see it's created the 24 bit uh, folder already. And it's also creating these uh, subfolders. So as soon as these are done, we'll take another look. All right, so you can see uh, if we look at the file names, sure enough, House of Kin, 01, Love is Alive, with that um, suffix at the end. Um, in the AACs, it's got the AAC production master suffix. Um, so then what I'll do is I'll take these folders. I'm trying to reach around the microphone here and not bump things. I'm going to take these. I'm just going to put them in production masters. I'm going to delete this temporary folder. And then I'm going to take the archival now and just move it to the top level masters folder. So now in my masters folder for this project, I have archival and I have production masters. And now this is basically ready to send out to the client. Yes, you should listen through and make sure everything is as expected. Um, do a QC pass, but really that's, that's ready to go. And this is just saved right into my Dropbox so I can grab a link and, and send this out. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only kind of addendum that I do want to add, because this, um, was a concern to me when I started setting these up is what if I drop a 44.1 K file into this 44.1 K production master batch processor? Is it going to resample it? Is that going to be bit transparent? Is it going to add something that I don't want? Um, so what I've got here is um, an original file, Love is Alive, um, and then the same file that has just been run through a separate batch processor that only had the, the sample rate conversion on it. Um, I've got them sample lined here. Um, on this second clip, I've got a stereo tool, which is inverting the phase. And if we uh, pop up the bit meter here and hit play, we can see that, yep, they're bit, bit transparent. They're completely canceling out. So we know that even running a 44.1K file through the 44.1K resampler isn't creating any artifacts whatsoever. And just so you understand how sensitive something like this is, if I change the gain on um, the second file by a thousandth of a decibel, one point zero zero one dB, and hit play, and then we look at bit meter. 
it's lighting up like a Christmas tree. So, um, you know, that's really all the, all the guarantee I need to know that I think effectively what it's doing is it's just bypassing the resampler. If it sees an incoming file that's at the same sample rate that the resampler is set to, it's just going to bypass it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That is how I uh, kind of quickly create um, the production master uh, files. And and oh, one other thing I just actually did want to show you guys. If I go ahead and just drop these into a metadata editor, and sort by name, we can see that, you know, everything's inheriting the same metadata um, for each song. It's all got uh, genre, album, uh, you know, track number and total uh, and disc number. Um, and if we look at just the first four formats, we can see all of this is the same. There's, there's just a little difference in terms of um, how a wave versus an MP3 versus an AC stores certain things. So some of these say multiple values, but but uh, it's basically just because they're stored in different fields. So um, this is really streamlined. A big part of my workflow uh, used to be that I would render out the archival versions, and then I would have to run one batch processor at a time in RX, and then rename things one at a time. And uh, so this has really sped things up and is working beautifully. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm going to make another one of these uh, shortly. I can't say exactly when yet, but hopefully soon. Um, looking at uh, a few other nifty things that are not necessarily so apparent on the surface. Um, kind of different ways to do uh, gain adjustments in WaveLab. Different places you can do them that are, make it very flexible. Um, how to use super clips for stem mastering and, and other things, uh, maybe other stuff as it comes up. So uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Take care.